It's finally the weekend. Good afternoon, South Africa, and well, welcome to Afternoon Express. Just another hour before you and I can go and get a drink somewhere and just I let know, this are, week go. Are we go. getting a drink? Are we Why getting not? a drink? Why not? It's a weekend. <laughs> yeah. Hey? You look amazing, FYI. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's interesting look for you. I really Very like it. It's got that sort of like arty feel. It kind of matches yeah. the show today. Yeah, yeah. I Joining us. Foxy Brown. Yeah. Ooh, gal. Just a little twirl for us. Come on, Foxy Brown. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Joining us on the show today is... I just is... showed my booty to the whole country. <laughs> Don't worry, Bonnie. Do not worry. It's looking amazing. Okay, okay. I'll give it to her. If you guys agree, tweet us. Hashtag <laughs> Afternoon Express. Let's get the show trending. Joining us on the show today is SAFTA award-winning actress. Uh, we are so excited to have her loft with us today. She's appeared in a lot of shows that I was so familiar with as a young boy. And I can't wait to have her in the loft. We'll reveal those details a little bit later on. She was Tando in the classic sitcom uh, Suburban Bliss, as well as Eve in the original Madam and Eve on television, the ad adaptation. Yeah. Then we chat to Amanda Sevilla, the owner of Conte magazine, which is a beautifully designed publication that gives African artists a platform to showcase their work. Indeed, one such artist is Azil, uh, who creates breathtaking paintings using interesting combinations of oil paint, ink, and then smoke from candles. He's already started doing his work in the loft, as you guys can see already. Uh, and we will be making sure that we try and uh, catch up on those platforms a little later on to show you his reveal of his art. Absolutely. And head of over to our social media platforms and let us know who your hashtag afternoon staring is this week who inspired you who's making big moves tweet us at afternoon chat using our usual hashtag afternoon express we also have a facebook page pop over to our facebook page and leave us a comment indeed you guys are part of this live show as much as we are so we'd love to hear your thoughts now if you caught last night's episode of presenter search on three you'll know that after a stressful live expresso takeover it was unfortunately lorena that uh, was eliminated from the competition we have her live in the loft with us today and she'll be taking us through her experience on that show and how difficult it was. Yeah. Our first guest is a multi-award winning actress and playwright. Motabi Yelele won a SAFTA for Best Supporting Actress in 2010 for her role in Nothing But The Truth. But to TV audiences, she's best known for her roles in two classic South African sitcoms, Madame and Eve uh, and as well as Tando in Suburban Bliss. He's thinking about it. Oh, I you didn't try hard enough. I did. Don't worry, Tony. You know, I'll get the shares. And then, in a few years, I'll be able to buy a farm. If I'm a safe day in the Ike. That's my dream, honey. You know, a farm, cattle, on the bank of Tugela River. Huh? The only bank I'm interested in is the bank that gives you the money to move to the suburbs. How? We're moving? Yes. Out of Soweto into the white suburbs. <laughs> What's wrong with Soweto? Soweto is low class and in a too many squatters. Ha! Then you should feel at home. Ike Umawako has no right to talk to me like Take this. Take us back to our childhood. It's so good to have <laughs> oh you with us gosh. today. Ah, thank oh, you, thank you so for, elegant. for inviting me. Yeah, gorgeous. I'm As humbled. for Soweto is low class. Ooh, in Soweto, is, I love them. <laughs> <laughs> it's home. I'm from Soweto, I love Soweto. <laughs> so, Suburban so Bliss was quite a groundbreaking mm. show um, when it did come onto our screens because it suddenly started to talk about where um, black folk were from in a way that was a bit like triggering. Mm. And also it was a, it was a beautiful mix of... of um, cultural perspectives, right? Could, yeah. could I say that? Yeah. And uh, it was quite groundbreaking. Do you remember those days, what it felt like and how it was received? You know what? I think it came at the right time. It helped South Africans to prepare themselves for the day that we mm. will be living next to each other. Yeah. You know, even though we're still not ready, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, many people could not take it, particularly the African uh, mm. people. Mm. Yeah. I remember some of... Uh, uh, mail, you know, uh, we used to get like, not, not, you know, hate mail or, yeah, egg, yeah. you know, wow. and there was a time that um, uh, this old lady followed me like, I really don't like you because you don't like Kobe, you know, and I thought, oh. ooh. Here we wow. go, it wow. has begun. But, but again, also teaching people that, yeah. you know what, that moment is coming and yeah. the more we get used to it. To be better. honest, I think the period of time leading up to sort of our democracy was a period, I think, for a lot of white South Africans of almost not being aware. It was almost like, an, a, a, like a, a lack of awareness or knowledge of what was going on. And this yeah. kind of put in front of their faces that this is the new reality. And it took a long time to, I think, make that transition across. Yeah. And I remember so clearly 
obviously falling in love with all your characters. I really, really enjoyed you. all your shows you played in as, as, while I was a, a young boy. But, uh, you know, your first role as Eve in Madam and Eve, the original, um, and the adaptation on television was also another way to kind of now not only talk about what's going on with black South Africans at the time, but to bring this into a white family and to satirize mm -hmm. those relationships, I think also brought a lot of political incorrectness yeah. into the sphere. Yeah. It did. You know, both of those, you know, Suburban Bliss and Madam and Eve, for me, what is even important, I know that because we come from such a uh, country, you know, that is polarized mm. with racial issues and all that, at the end of it all, you realize that it's about human beings, mm. being human. Human nature, you know, it's got nothing to do with anything but treat me like I matter, mm. you know. Yeah. Uh, when you look at the... Recognize my humanity. Exactly, yeah. you know. Uh, in yeah. the end, it, it's, not be, it's not about race, yeah. really. Mm. Yeah. It's about just being human beings. But as an actress, though, in, in that space, you know, you always think about theatre becoming the political sort of mirror to society. But, you know, these kind of shows were doing something quite similar. Did you feel like it was just another paycheck, just another gig to, to put your talent towards? Or was it a political... Thing for you. Was it like a, a Look, one Can you see stories? how she's looking at you? Mm -hmm. What do you take my work for? <laughs> <laughs> I'm intrigued. Do you feel the impact of it? For me personally, it's not about another paycheck. Yeah. It is what I'm meant to be here to do, and it's deeper than that. Mm. If I cannot be the mirror of society to say, let us look at ourselves, let us probably pay attention to other things, mm. then who? Exactly. Who will do that mm. if yeah. it's not me, the artist? Yes. I always say, you know, maybe they are I artists think... and they are yeah. artists. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do we have a little bit of a footage feed <laughs> to check out? <laughs> Explosive. You're quite mm. a pioneer in your roles. I mean, you tackled issues that were quite yeah. uncomfortable. This just followed on yeah, from, tell us from about Adam and Eve. Yes. No, no, this I wrote it in around 2002. Uh -huh. And um, I, it was my dream that come 2004, the 10th year of our, you know, anniversary, freedom, mm. um, that would be my contribution to South Africa. Beautiful. And, and you won and many was, awards for it. Well, not many. I won one award, the Naledi Award <laughs> for it. I love Comic it, actress, Bonnie. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. And it's now published in, there's a book called Plays from Post Apartheid South Africa yes. mm. at, at, at this stage. Mm. Yes. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's Thank a great you. contribution. It's not a little Thank one. You. Yes. It's so modest. You know. <laughs> Thank you. And I hope, you know, it can be used even in yeah. schools yeah. because yeah. these are issues not only of you know cu cultural issues mm -hmm. tradition the media justice system in terms of issues of women abuse of children mm. i mean we're talking about it even today you think yeah. it has yeah. changed no yeah. things are getting worse i always make a joke that i'll you know i'll probably perform that play till i'm 91 That's or beautiful. something it's always you know. been relevant for you're us. also yeah. rocking the corporate space that corporate world doing corporate communication training yes, yes. how's yes. that going it's been such a blessing, you know. I am now a certified executive coach, yeah. you know, with Ooh, Berkeley, in London, right? with, with Berkeley, no, in the, the US, in the Berkeley oh, US. Executive okay. Coaching Institute. Um, and uh, now and again, I work with them all around the world. Uh, wow. I just got back from Italy, yeah. you know, where we train executives who want to become mm. coaches. I feel like there's a That's huge conversation beautiful. in this. I don't want you to go anywhere, because I want to start talking about your passion for teaching people how to communicate and young people. So don't go anywhere, get yourself for Relax on this couch. Okay. You guys obviously better stay stay tuned because it's going to be an interesting conversation. I hope Twitter is alight with that hashtag Afternoon Express for our amazing guests. We'll definitely be back. Tweet us um, Afternoon Chat. Pop over to our Facebook page and leave us a comment on any of our platforms. We'll be right back.
Well, welcome back to Afternoon Express. It's a Friday. I hope you guys are ready for the weekend. We've got amazing guests on the show today. We hope you're using that hashtag Afternoon Express. This conversation is just kind of feels like it's just got started. I know. Absolutely. <laughs> so your purpose has led you down very different paths. And um, we were talking during the break about how a lot has changed in the industry. Mm. Uh, a lot has changed, especially in, in young people's intent for why they want a spotlight. What are your thoughts on that? You know, I always say that as a creative person, um, our gifts, are, you know, there's something precious and sacred about being an actor. Mm. This is just me, mm -hmm. okay? Um, that um, unless if we really follow on that path, then I think we fail society. Yeah. So meaning, I personally felt that my work is, should be able to transform people move people from point A to B, if I can teach, if I can help people reflect on their lives and do better and yeah. become better, that would be, you it's know... So it's like such a deeper purpose to the acting than just I want to spotlight or to be able to broadcast or to be able to act. Fame will come to get with lights, that. Yeah. You yeah. Know, followers Double now. taps and followers oh, and God. That subscribers. Is, that is painful because mm. even with that, you are not even able to settle in the message, the deeper message mm. of oh. whatever you want to do exactly. because you are so concerned sure. about the frivolous yes. things. You know, uh, I mean, a simple thing. I'm not saying people should be serious and what. I mean, I've been doing all these humorous mm. things. Mm. But a simple thing like Madam and Eve or Suburban Bliss, Tando, yes, might be here, but there's substance, there's a reason, even for me as a performer, the subtext to mm. understand the dynamics of the scenario, and it's not just funny, mm. you know, live that it's moment. It's satirical, which is about teaching, it's not necessarily yeah. about we, just the laughs. Exactly. Yeah. And you I know. think it's imperative in one's development and growth that you have that constant internal dialogue where you're holding yourself accountable mm. to what is this purposeful, is this meaningful, yes. what is the objective of why mm. I'm doing it. Yeah, and I always say performers, we are there, artists, musicians, we are there to express the things that ordinary people are afraid mm, to express. To express. Yeah. Yes. You see? And if we can't help that, I mean, this is one of the things that really kind of concerns me, even now in South Africa, that yes, we see all these things, but the actor's voice is very quiet. Yeah. This is yeah. where we really have to actually mm. come. Yeah, we should time. actually mm. say, we are the ones who are brave enough to say, Come kill us if you want to kill us, mm. but we yeah. have to say it because we are sure. rescuing the situation. I love you that. Know. For somebody who's so passionate yeah. about the craft, what I've been so interested in, in reading more about you is your, your, your diversification of your, your income streams and looking at you know, opportunities in corporate communications. What for you is the link between sort of teaching youngsters and corporate communications to this absolute narrative of challenging status quo? How do those two come together? You know, at the... At the end of it all, it's life skills. Mm. For example, if we talk about voice, that child at school, if she or he doesn't have a voice, then she's doomed. That leader who mumbles when they're supposed to give mm. us proper information, <laughs> message, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so it's really finding our center. And once we find our center, who we are, we understand why we are here. Mm. You know, wow. I always say it helps even in prioritizing what you need to do, wow. to know. You know, working on that body that, you know, my center goes with my breath, but it's also deeper because it goes further mm. with your spirit, you Absolutely. know? Absolutely. So your work, the interpretation, the presentation, whether you are a politician, whether you are a dancer, whether you finding that center, if we can all find our centers, we will actually be, you know, to yeah, do, as yeah. they say. Yeah. 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 Sure, that's powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. So I, I really think that the fact that even a lot of things go wrong or people just do things without thinking is because we've yeah. lost our centre. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously speaking about losing that centre, I think a lot of young people are feeling lost, that sense of identity, trying to find themselves. And we keep talking this month about, you know, trying to live out Tata Madiba's legacy and what that means. And I think his generation and the generation of actors we're starting to interview, they were in your, your life uh, stage, were very focused and driven and had purpose. Our young people are losing purpose. What would be your word for the purposeless? Well, I think also, you know, we need to also get back to reaching out to, to the youngsters. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I always feel sad that personally I'm not even doing enough 
with the young people. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things, every time young actors, young kids in the townships talk to me, I find that there's a need for them Mentor. to talk to someone, mm. to Absolutely. reach out. So they clearly it shows that there is something that is missing mm. between them. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, so I think we need to reach out and we need to be there. Yeah. Not in a way that we, I mean, things have changed, technology and all those things. So go with the challenges that are there. Mm. But we really need to start seeing each other. I always say, you know, there are four powers in the universe that everybody else needs. It's, you know, the, what people want to be seen, people want to be heard, people want to make a contribution, and people want to be recognized. Mm. So we have sure. to start doing that. See the young people, hear the young people, and allow them to be, to bring their yeah. also gifts, mm. and help them to nurture that. Absolutely. You know? So, yeah. Thank you so much for inspiring us today. Oh, You're as thank gorgeous you. as always. Is it Monday or is it Friday? Because it feels like Motivational Monday. Yeah, it feels yeah. like the day's been confused. feels like church. Yeah. Yes, amen. <laughs> oh my sister. goodness. I hope, I hope I have really inspired you. You have so. been. Oh, yes. You've been amazing. So please, thank guys, you. head over to our social sites and start uh, sending us all the love that you can using the hashtag Afternoon Express. And while you guys are there, we're asking you who your afternoon staring is for this week. Who inspired you or is making a great uh, sort of move in the in the world around you? You can tweet those through to at Afternoon Chat using the hashtag Afternoon Express. There's also our Facebook page, which is always open for your comments as well. Afternoon Express, we reply to everything. Yeah, we're going to take a short break, but when we return, we head to the kitchen where Chef Clem prepares breakfast muffins using clover mm -hmm. amasi. Plus, we meet the owner of Conte Magazine, a publication that gives African visual artists a platform to showcase their talent. One such talent is Azil Langa, and we'll be looking at some of his work.
Welcome back to Friday on Afternoon Express, live on SOVC3 now. Amanda Sabia is the owner of Conte, a creative agency responsible for Conte magazine. Indeed. Many young African artists are starved for a platform to showcase their talents to a wide audience. And uh, Conte magazine is a publication that provides this opportunity and also the chance to make a living from the art, which I think is something that this industry really, really needs. Yeah. Welcome to The Loft. Thank you so much for yeah. having me. I mean, this is such a, a niche space mm. and nobody Very. has been ventured into this space mm -hmm. before because it is somewhat intimidating. It is, it is, it is very intimidating yeah. and I was told many times, Amanda, you are swimming against the grain, where mm. are you going? Yeah. Um, which makes it very intimidating for me to get into as well. Yeah. So but you, you it did it because yeah, you're an intern, right? And yes. you're like, I am full of having, in being an intern the whole time <coughs> and yeah. I, want, I want to go make <laughs> yeah. something that I can control, yes. own and work yeah. with. Yeah. What was that intern frustration like though? It was so frustrating because you have someone like sitting right behind, not even sitting, standing right behind you and wanting to control every move you make. Yeah. And I'm like, listen, I study to do this, so relax. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, so it was frustrating for me because it's like I'm somewhat mm -hmm. of a control freak. And for me, it's like if you want to if you want to direct my life, you can't do it in that way. Mm -hmm. So it was that frustration of having to answer to someone, whereas you weren't, I studied this thing. I've got the qualification. Yeah. I was there graduating on my own. You weren't there, so let me do what I do best. Um, so it was that frustration that made me want to leave that um, and to kind of start the mm -hmm. platform for artists like myself, but not just to solve the problem for me, but to solve it for like the future generations and mm. my daughter, who's hopefully going to be an artist as well somewhere in life. Mm. But um, it was not only for me, but for everyone else after that. So the internship frustration was deep. Yeah. 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 And I mean, we see it everywhere in the creative industry. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. But it's such a millennial thing, I think, to feel like I'm a, I've got my education, yeah. I know better, I want to be better, and everyone's trying to start like these magazines to, you know, showcase the talent. Yes. But still, there has to be a financial model behind it. There has to be a business plan behind it. It has to make Definitely. money at the end of the day. Definitely. So tell us about the business model and how that all works for you these know, creatives. You know, at first, when I started, I didn't know what I was doing. Mm. I literally was just I love hearing project. people. I love hearing people be honest and say yeah. that. <laughs> I had no clue what I was doing. Like, I literally, you know when they say jump off a cliff? Yeah. That was me making a parachute as I go down. I was like, <laughs> I need to take off my shirt. Ooh. I need to not, like, fall down. Oh, wow. Um, but it was, I'm very passionate about what I do. And that's literally the first thing I feel like people need to know. Mm -hmm. um, so I literally was figuring out as I go. I was like, do, do I have money now? Nope. Do, does daddy have money? Nope. Does mama have money? <laughs> nope. Grandmama, you got money too? No. Nope. Oh, wow. Um, but it was so, I was so passionate about it. I'm so passionate about the creative industry that I, Found, there was, I found joy in nothing else. And yeah. it was so difficult explaining to my mom that I wanted to study animation in the first place. I was like, so you want to <laughs> draw for the rest of your life? Yes. 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 Yeah. Um, so that was the difficulty at yeah. first. But then I, it's, I think it's in the passion that you have for something that you just jump, even though you don't Absolutely. know how you're going to make money out of it. Yeah. So it took about three years to finally make money out of it. That's yeah. beautiful. And why has why overseas picked this up faster than sort of South Africa has? You know, overseas people like African things. Mm, they do. They like <laughs> yeah. things. They don't want African yeah, things. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> does, it speak to, does it speak to the gatekeepers of, Af of, of yeah. art in Africa at mm -hmm. the moment and how willing they are to stretch it open mm. to allow new yes. influences yes. and different races mm -hmm. and different languages? Yeah. I mean, it's very, it's very different. And in this specific issue that you have, that's the first one where we had like a full on Zulu piece written in it. Yeah. And all of the other ones were all in English. But I was like, you know what? If, uh, if people who don't know this language, they must sit there with a translator and right. read it and understand it. And as passionate as I am of the creative industry, I'm as passionate about Africa. Yeah, yeah. So if ever I, I can put Africa somewhere, and in this case, in a, in a magazine for yeah. people to experience, yeah. but not to experience just because this is Africa, but experience it through its art. Because mm. I feel like artists are the most expressive people mm. um, in their artistry. It might not be them talking, but they're expressive in a sense mm. of their artwork, whether it's fashion, whether it's fine art, whatever it is. If I can express Africa through art, then that's exactly what yeah. I'm going to do. So and they don't have platforms to do that. Yes, there, there aren't. Yes, yeah. because it's so compressed to what yeah. is, it's like, yeah. modeled nicely so that this is the yeah. nice message we want people exactly. to hear and not the authentic African yeah. creative message that actually needs to be out there. Wow. We're proud of yeah. you and we just wanted to say that. Congrats. Well, thank you. I've you rock. been browsing through it. It's amazing. You guys definitely need to get your hands on yeah. it. It's really good to see African artists being celebrated the way that, the mm -hmm. way that they are. So yeah. you're a star. Thanks for joining us on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. Mm -hmm. oh, it's a pleasure. Let's get cooking.
Super Mussy is a thick, creamy mass your family will love. Made with love by Clover. It's finally the end of the week and we have a fantastic brunch recipe for you to try this weekend. Clover Amasi, with its creamy texture and rich flavour, is the key ingredient you'll need to make these delicious breakfast muffins. And to get the list of ingredients you need, all you have to do is SMS that keyword uh, to 33650. It is Clover and you can get that recipe sent straight to your device. SMSs cost 1 Rand 50 and no free SMSs apply. Clem has obviously got all of the magic touch, uh, touches that he puts to these recipes. Sure That's how you've gotten started. I I have. So we're calling these muffins, but essentially the magic is in the batter, okay? Okay. That's where everything's happening. So in here, the bowl already... It's always batter some... with the batter. It is, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's lacquer with the batter. Lacquer with the batter. There we go. So we got some <laughs> cheddar cheese, we got some mozzarella, mm -hmm. we got some corn, tin mm -hmm. corn, frozen corn, whatever you got, add the corn in there. And I got some mushrooms. I cooked in like a lot of garlic, like six cloves of garlic. Oh, I yummy. want the flavor in there. The trick is actually the mushrooms, is mushroom, the bacon, all these moist ingredients actually keep your muffins or your, your batter very, very moist. Yeah. So that's there's, the trick. there's no egg in here. Which is, oh, there will be is egg, egg, is egg absolutely. So I'm gonna go with the flour first, mm -hmm. and this is self-raising flour, no baking powder. You know what I mean? Just like one less ingredient to work with. And then, Dad, how about you take the words and start at your spatula, start mixing that through. Cool. And as you're doing that, I'm gonna add your egg, a bit of a binder Binding in there already. Yeah. So we're making these into into muffins, right? You can actually pop this in your waffle iron. It'll make the craziest savory waffles. No, gross. No, no clear. Yeah, it is no, crazy. Man. You will not leave your bed really? the weekend. You'll sit there. Remember last weekend you made a fort? You yeah. make a fort again just eating this whole weekend. <laughs> All right? I can't afford that you again. <laughs> no. Uh, so mm. salt and pepper going in. Okay. Then, extra ingredients. Oops. We're going to have four cheeses in this muffin, okay? Totally, why okay. not? Quattro formaggi. formaggi. Here we go. Look at the look at the ketan boy teaching the Italian guy. Oh my <laughs> goodness, I love it. Then cheese number three, feta going in there. Mm -hmm. Some leeks going in, and then bacon, which is rendered. We didn't render the fat out. We want that bacon yes, fat. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's gonna moisture, add moisture, moisture, and big flavor going in there. Usually, muffins you're adding a whole bunch of things like you know butter, etc. Uh -huh. With that bacon in there, it's the oil you need. It is. So this is some olive pasta, like tapenade. Oh. Pesto, like you know, oh. add that in there. That's a bit of zinc. You can use tomato paste for that. Totally Honestly, go crazy. Use a leftover pasta sauce if you didn't use it all. Just you have to be the capital. Who has leftover pasta sauce? I do. Okay, not coming to yours for dinner. Yeah, it's just in case that extra surprise guest arrives. All right, you know? okay, cool. Then Clover Marcy brings it all together. Okay, you ready for this? Mm, I you, am. You, you're a good mixer, eh? Here's the hero ingredient. You ready? Yeah, we go. Ready for you. So I'm eyeballing this, but I know how much to add. Literally, when it starts making a batter, it comes together nice and thick, we're winning. Clover Marcy also adds a bit of that tang. Oh, yeah. To it, okay? I like making this batter ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Keeping it in the fridge, it'll keep for about three days, which is really wow, cool. Wow, that's yeah, really cool. So you sort it for the whole weekend. I kind of like this idea, and also Amasi itself, everyone generally thinks that you can't even really drink it. To be able to use okay. it in something, you know, interesting like this, it's so cool to be able to see, to cook with it. it but that always bakes with Amasi, but I've never seen us bake like a savoury dish and like that with Amasi. This is a real, this is, like, you have to try this. Cool. I've also made this into like, put, put this in a loaf tin and made a bread out of it. Nice. It is really, really crazy. Yeah, like a pizza bread almost. Yeah, exactly. So you're going to have a roast mm -hmm. on Sunday, right? Totally. Cool, your leftover chicken, butternut, pumpkin, mm -hmm. whatever you have left Holding, over, yeah. add that to the batter instead of the bacon and the leeks, and you're gonna have like a little leftover Sunday yeah. roast. If I'm honest, this is something you might want to make if you're somebody who's trying to get your fitness back in this sort of winter season. You kind of go to gym, you make these, snack on one on your way to work. If you're rushing around the whole place, you know, it's quite an easy yeah, way to, to do that. That's nice. There we go. So you've wondered where the fourth cheese was. It's actually the parmesan, which you put in the crust at the bottom of your muffin tindica that's lined like that. That's how we can get it out there. Brilliant. Four cheese breakfast muffins done. What Lekker. Do Sounds and looks delicious, and to be honest, even though it's not cooked yet, it smells amazing as well. So, good job. Yeah, Very yeah. quick and easy way to get all of those ingredients and those nice flavors into your system all in one easy dish. And it's uh, very simple to do. So, if you want this recipe, that keyword is clover, C L O V E R. You SMS that to 33650 at a cost of 1 Rand 50, and literally it'll pop up on your mobile device. And if you need a little reminding of how the steps sort of unfolded, watch this.
Made with love by Clover. From food to art, his art depicts everyday experiences of the often overlooked individuals in our society, the people he describes as silent ghosts in our economy, desperately trying to support their households. Azale Langer's art makes use of a unique technique, combining smoke and oil paint, and has taken him to some of the world's most coveted galleries, and he joins us on the show today. Azale, this is what you've been starting with just on the show today, you know, right? in the last yeah, couple yeah. of minutes. It mm -hmm. looks amazing. Thank you. Dan. This is such an interesting technique. Yeah, it is. Um, and the fun thing is, most of people, like when they look at my technique, they think it's new. It's not. Mm. It's been there. It's been done since the old masters. But now, what we do as artists, we take the same technique and renew it now and then because mm. it's more like creating our own signature, like yeah, writing. Sure. Yeah. Everybody writes, but how you write. It's different. It's different. So yeah. what is this technique? I see there's some burn marks and things. There's some other oils in there as well. What is this technique? Does it have a name? Is it describable? Well, they, they used to call it fumage, which, yeah, they call it fumage. But, um, yeah, we call it smoke drawing and, yeah. But then with this, this is ink. I use ink and candle mm. to do it, yeah. With ink, I'm trying to use brighter colors that warms them up. That yeah. because if it's too dark for me, it's, I, I bring no change into the situation. Mm -hmm. So I'm basically, it's more like a spiritual process and healing to myself mm -hmm. is um, I started this year actually removing the eyes. Most of my wow. work now, they don't have eyes because I literally focus on the spirit mm -hmm. rather than the mm -hmm. body. So that's why you find this yeah, globe of energy surrounding yeah. my figures here. Yeah. And also kind of rise, that whole sort of rising up as though they are the sort of flame, they are the light, they are the energy. I, I love yeah. that. <laughs> when did you first like realize that you were so in love with art and wanted okay. to play around with form? Well, it started early. I was young. I think I was in primary. Yeah, I was in primary. Then, because uh, I was a quiet guy, you know, always by the Introvert, corner. Introvert, yes. Yeah, so my, 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 my only way to, 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 to voice out was through art. Mm. Then with that, it allowed me actually to grow. And my teacher, one of my teachers saw that. He pushed me to, to pu pursue it as a career. But that was after I won my first competition. Mm. Then I went to high school, did art. Then a lot of people pushed me, so it was more like I was destined to become an artist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then from then till now, it became part of me. And just honing that craft bit mm -hmm. by bit, I guess, and learning yeah. new techniques and playing around with those. So you've managed to find your signature, and obviously you've got your exhibition, right? Uh, yeah. Tell us about the exhibition itself and what people are going to be expecting and sort of how the whole experience is of putting so much of your, yourself out there for the world to see. Well, it, it's crazy how it started. Um, as I said, harnessing the spirit in my work and stuff. So what happened was for me to work on the exhibition, I moved to Joburg, right? Mm. And as I walk around Joburg, it feels like all these people that are walking from back where they come from, we all spirit, we all one when we're in that space, which is yeah. the building yeah. and stuff. So I, as I walk past them, I feel some of them, the spirits are dead. Mm. So how can I change that? It's through my work. Only did I know that later on I'm going to lose my brother. So sure. losing him became something else because I couldn't, mm. I, I couldn't grieve. I couldn't, I was like, I couldn't believe it. So this somehow it brought that spirit into me. So I was now focusing mm. into communicating with him. Yeah. So my experiences were, was reflected through others. Yeah. Then that's where through you, I am came. Yeah. So the sacrifices he had made for me yeah. was my show. So in my show, a lot of people look at it and they don't see me through it. But the funny thing is, I was not looking at me as the guy who went through the experiences, mm. but everybody goes through the experiences. Mm. So my work is more like trying to heal them. Sure. Well, first of all, I must say, like, I'm terribly sorry for the, for the loss of your brother. And it's so beautiful to see artists taking emotional experiences like that and translating it into something that is beautiful, taking what is ash and making it beautiful. Yeah. Um, and same thing as you, you imagine the, the ugliest part of a candle being the smoke that comes smoke. out the top. And you've turned that into something beautiful here as well. Yeah. Um, tell us about this particular piece. I mean, what are you trying to create here? Well, as, as my work focuses on the average Joes, the normal people that we come across every day, mm. this is the person here, but then... If you look at you know that windmill and pump, mm -hmm. pumping water outside, mm -hmm. so what I do is in all my work you see this the house, so the house for me a home is not just a house. Yes. A home is what we keep inside. Yes. So this is more trying to feed that home. 
So in everything we do, everywhere we go, we're trying to build up. Like you trying to go to work and coming back, mm -hmm. you go and source a sense of home, bringing it mm -hmm. to the house. So the house becomes a home. So that whole process for me, it's work and stuff. Yeah. So this figure here, it's that person yeah. who's sourcing. No, trying source. to feed more of that home yes. in them. Sure. Well, mm. I'm really proud of you for the work that you've been doing thus far, and I'm very excited about this exhibition. So much of yourself put out there for the world to see, and I think it'll create a lot of healing in itself. So yeah. I'm going to let you carry on, dude. You can finish <laughs> off this uh, particular piece because I'm sure yeah. it's going to take up the rest of the show. Uh, he's an amazing, amazing human being, and I think it's so beautiful to be able to interview artists because artists have such an incredible way of seeing the world. They think deeply. I hope that you guys are inspired as well by the artists we've had on Afternoon Express today. After the break, we turn our attention to presenter search on three. Joining us on the couch is Lorena, who unfortunately saw an end to her journey on the show last night. She shares her experiences with us, so we'd love for you to head over to our social media platforms uh, and start commenting on the stuff that's been on the show today using that hashtag Afternoon Express. You're as much a part of our conversation, um, obviously, as we are on the couch today on Afternoon Express. And while you guys are there, you can answer the question, who is your hashtag Afternoon Steading uh, for this particular week? Who inspired you? Who's making great moves in the industry or in the world around you? Tweet those through to at afternoon chat using the hashtag afternoon express or comment on our Facebook page. This looks interesting. Since the outbreak of the hit track Wallalo, Babes or Do More has become a household name and helped to put a spotlight on GOM music, with the most notable feature being in Marvel's blockbuster Black Panther. She will be joining us on your Feel Good Breakfast Show on Monday, 16 July, from 6 to 9 a.m. to help you start your day just the right way, only here on SABC3. The stage is yours. <laughs>
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. We're live on SABC3. Now, last night's episode of Presenter Search on 3 saw the top nine contestants tasked with co-presenting the Expresso Morning Show live. Laurina Machite was unfortunately the second contestant elimin eliminated and is in studio today to tell us about her experience as a contestant of Presenter Search on 3. Laurina, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you, you made it me. really fun, the competition. Congratulations. What Thank was the journey? You. Like Thank you. you. It was amazing. I did not see myself honestly making it this far. That's so far. I'm very proud of myself. Good, good. <laughs> Please don't be sad, people at home. Oh. I am very, very proud of yes. myself. I'm very happy. I, I met a lot of wonderful people behind the scenes. Yeah. Uh, people that I will be friends with forever, even yeah. including the contestants That's as well. That's so, beautiful. The best yeah. memories are made that way. Uh, I know, right? <laughs> so then you were tasked with hosting the Expresso Morning Show live. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. <sighs> What a task. <laughs> How were you feeling leading up to it? How were you feeling mm -hmm. while it was happening? Listen, I hadn't even ever been live on Instagram, let alone, Girl. you know, live during the people. You, know? you should have been Probably making those live videos on Instagram. <laughs> I should have practiced a little yeah. more, you know? Um, yeah, I was really nervous. I was nervous, but uh, going into it, just like I went into everything else, I was like, you know what, have fun. Have fun and you'll yes. be fine. So yeah, that's how I felt going into it. Wow. <laughs> so you subsequently got eliminated. Yeah. Tell us about that moment. Oh, do I have to? <laughs> yes. For closure. Yeah, no. Um, listen. Should we just check it out quickly, cool, just to make cool. it easy for yes. you? <laughs> My name is Larina Machita and today we have one of South Africa's most popular artists, Prince KB, and he'll be performing Club Controller, so you have to stay tuned. Um, there is a social media aspect to our competition. Mm. What do you think is the importance of action? Um, thank you so much for uh, joining us and um, we'll lead on to the next presenter. When your spotlight turns off, that will mean it's the end of your presenter search on three journey. Larina, your journey has come to an end. I'm so, so sorry. Oh, but what happened? Oh? What okay, happened? girl, let me explain. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened was, yeah. <laughs> I was in the middle of asking a question. Obviously, I had been timed mm -hmm. down, as we all are. Yes. <laughs> but um, in the middle of asking my question, I now realize I've run out of time. So now I didn't mm. know, do I continue with the question? Is this going to mess up the entire show right. now? So that's why I then just like blanked out and stopped mid Mid question, yeah, yeah. but otherwise, I mean, the rest of the co the the interview was fine. The rest of the show was fine, but you know that one mistake. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah that's what got me. And you realize, <laughs> looking back at that, that a lot of live television is about making very quick decisions, exactly. mm -hmm. but making sure that you pack up the moment neatly and nicely, and you sweep it along exactly, exactly, so that it's coherent. Mm, it was all about improvisation, and I. I just, I guess it was too much. Yeah. But <laughs> well, actually, it wasn't girl, too much. It was you know. a lot. But um, now I know. Now you know. Girl. Now I know. And I'm back on live television now. Look you at know, you. And I'm doing great. Look at you. <laughs> How are you feeling, though, going forward? I'm feeling wonderful. Yeah. I am feeling really great. Like I said, when I came into this competition, it, I wanted it to be a learning experience. Yeah. And I did exactly that. I've learned so much. I've met a lot of people. The crew behind the scenes has taught me so much. Yes. And I will use this going forward uh, yeah. in whatever I do. Even, you know, job yeah, interviews. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm so glad you mentioned the crew. I remember mm -hmm. when I first met my first um, agent, she mm -hmm. sat me down and she said to me, Bonnie, when you walk onto set, yeah. the first people you make friends with exactly. are the crew. Exactly. Because exactly. the crew will teach you so much and they'll protect you and they'll catch you. And they're just generally amazing people. No, the crew is is probably the, the, the people that I miss the most, the most out of all of it because yeah. it's the things that they don't catch on camera that really are going to stick yeah. with me forever. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so well, I'm listen, girl, that. congratulations for making it Thank this you. far. I mean, if it had been me, I would never have been ready. <laughs> so I get it. I get you know, it. Girl, you did so well. From not even Instagram what do you know about the top 10? <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck. We wish you all the best. Thank we know you. that your journey Thank will be you. amazing amazing and fruitful. Thank you. <laughs> so don't forget to catch the next episode of Presenter Search on 3 next Thursday on the 19th of July at 7.30 p.m. on SABC3.
It's a great way to end the week. Welcome back to Afternoon <laughs> Express. And as you know, Online Express, we begin with a shout out to our Afternoon Steadings of the Week. Firstly, we wanted to salute all the amazing young people who came onto the show this week thus far to share their talent with us. We had the rapper who I can bet my money on is going to blow up by Luansta. What a legend. And we also had Bax and Meaty, the B-Boys. They performed here on the show and they're going to take the world by storm. We also had Moonchild's little superstar, Artemis, who I ended up posting on Instagram. She's the cutest kid in the world. Oh. And uh, today we obviously talked to the owner of Conte Magazine, Amanda Sibia. You guys really are the afternoon stirrings that we need on the show. So thanks for joining I us this week. I absolutely agree. Our next afternoon stirrings are the South African tennis players who did the most at Wimbledon this week. Kevin Anderson beat defending champion Roger Federer to make it into the semi-finals. Anderson is the first male player representing South Africa to contest a Wimbledon semi-final since Kevin Curran in 1983. Can you believe it? It's really, really exciting. He's currently in his fourth set, ladies and gents. Hope you guys are supporting him, watching it on the television screens. Go and stream it, find it, and support yeah. Kevin. He is going to be making South Africa so proud. No, it's amazing. Mm. Raven Klaassen has made it all the way to the men's doubles final, which will be competing in tomorrow. And Hutato Muchante is South Africa's first black woman to play at Wimbledon. It's not every day that you get a tweet mm. directly from Mr. President Cyril Ramaphosa. Yeah, how cool to have received that from him. It yeah. was really, really awesome to yeah. see. Oh, sorry. We also woke up on Monday morning to see musician MT's video all over social media's newsfeed. I cannot tell you how many times I saw this tweet Ooh. over and over again. The memes were insane. I think we need to just watch this video speak, before we... I couldn't speak because I'm too emotional. That's why oh. I was just like, you take this one. Take a look. <laughs> Wow, and the memes that came out. Apparently the knee-jerk reaction on social media has been that he was just drunk and that he was not very serious about his career at all. And alas, another challenge was born because of that. People sharing videos of almost mostly intoxicated people falling backwards. And I, it's disturbing. Yeah, it is disturbing. And look, say what you want, and I'm going to make this stand. Looking at his face, he is just out of it. Dude oh. is out of it. Something happened backstage that he was drinking something, doing something that wasn't too good for his performance or his career. And not a great example too for young people. Too much cough mixture. I don't know. <laughs> but maybe it's not all no, that it seems. No, but for real, though. It's not yes. everybody who makes it this far on, this, on yeah. this platform, in this industry. And when you can make it this far, as young as he is, it is a privilege. It is an honor. Yeah. Thousands of talented people are trying to get in. Yeah. And he is a role model. He yeah. should be. And yes, life is really stressful. Perhaps you're finding it stressful to be inside the spotlight, but you still have a responsibility to yourself, to your family, yeah. and to other young people to uh, kind of keep that example. But maybe it's not all that it seems. I don't know. Maybe you guys have some different thoughts to us on Afternoon Express. Someone inspired by the Soccer World Cup asked for video assistant referee and the replay uh, shows someone from the audience who was holding his leg and AK had a, had a thread on his Twitter feed not mentioning any names but also asking for people to be more empathetic when it came to celebs. I'm not too sure that that's the most responsible response. No, I don't response. know. Look, yeah. It's, you know, South African celebs have it a little bit easier than celebs all over the world but I, I, I really think... Yeah, what kind of response just, is that? Just get that? it together. Just get Come it together, on. guys. We all have the responsibility of getting it together. Yeah, I, really I mean, I, don't so. really, I didn't really enjoy his response either, almost making excuses for this kind of stuff. And then it is totally true. There are so many pressures that people do face uh, in the limelight and under, you know, people always expect them to be something other than what they are. And I still don't think that that's a good enough excuse no, to not. do what they the do. The whole world is expected to show up and do their best. Indeed. Did we yeah. fall over on the floor today? No. Well done, Bonnie. You and I made it. <laughs> We did this. We did it. So it's good to join you guys on Afternoon Express today. It's really cool to be able to celebrate another shade, incredible okay. week. Yeah, that was a lot of shade, but no, for real though. Yeah, I think we must learn to kind of bring it towards ourselves and realize that there are different yeah. people and we're all different. And, and there are people who have it worse. Mm. Yeah. Indeed. So join us again on Monday when we bring you co-host of 5FM Nights, radio personality Dumi Foster. Yeah, indeed. She joined us on the show before and we cannot wait to have her back in the loft to be able to have more of an in-depth conversation about her journey thus far. She was on, on Yo! TV. She did all yeah. the auditions for yeah. Yo! TV. Yeah. Now she's on 5 FM. We can't wait to unpack her journey. Thank you to all our guests today. They were absolutely amazing. I'm off to negotiate with Azil Langa on how much he'll charge me for that painting because she's taking it home. It is so beautiful. <laughs> our guests were amazing today, super inspiring. And I can't wait to go and comment and reply to all the threads on Facebook, Instagram, as well as on Twitter. So if you're on the social sites, please continue to share the love with us. But you need to have a very safe and beautiful weekend. Remember, don't take too much of that substance and then end and up on the stage. Stay away from the cough mixture. Stay away and do we not fall you. over. All right. <laughs> we love you lots, South Africa. Have a good weekend. <laughs> good night. Happy eating. Mwah.
Afternoon Express. Made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.